Hey everyone, today we'll be making a Flareon art doll. I made a Flareon in the past, but this time we'll be using a more retro color scheme. Let's get started. The fur we'll be using for the main body is Tangerine Short Fox from Howl Fabrics. It's got a coarse, realistic texture and lays pretty flat, but it's still decently thick. You can get away with less shaving since it's rather form-fitting. For the tail and ruff, we'll be using this golden yellow look shag from Big Z. To start out with, let's make some eyes. I'm using glass cabochons and we're going to apply some shiny nail film to the glass using UV resin. It really helps bring the eyes to life and I love the mystical effect. For the underlying eyes, I've pre-painted cardstock circles with black acrylic paint and I'm layering on blue with an acrylic paint pen. I always use acrylic paint because it's pretty waterproof once dry and less likely to bleed. Now I'm just going to blast this with mica powder and blue glow powder. I have no plan here, I'm just going with the flow. I'm working on a silicone mat, so if I make a mess it's not a problem. And because we can't have enough shine, I'm going to apply a layer of glitter. First I'm applying a thin layer of UV resin to the whole eye, then I'll just sprinkle glitter on over it, letting the resin do the work for me. I'm also adding a bit of extra blue glow powder to this layer. I added some stars. This is just a personal signature of sorts. Now we just put our pieces together with more UV resin, making sure to pop any bubbles. Here I'm applying shipping tape to the back of the eyes to protect the paper. And here's the result. Pretty neat for how easy they were to make. Now let's make our head with our silicone mold. We don't want the eyes to fall off during the resin cure, so I'm using a bit of tacky glue on the sockets. Once it's dry, I just pop the eyes in place and make sure they're secure. I'll be casting this head outside. I use shipping tape to seal my mold shut. The resin seeped into the eye socket, but that's okay. Let's gently remove it with a dull X-Acto knife. Let's put the head aside and work on our body. The armature is the skeleton on your art doll and is what makes it poseable. For the spine, I'm using ball and sockets with X pieces for my legs to attach to. I put this together with armature pliers. We'll be using wire for the legs. This is 16 gauge steel. You bend the wire in accordance with your skeleton sketch for the four legs. A skeleton needs bones. We'll be using popsicle sticks to prevent parts of the wire from being bent out of shape. But first, we need to wrap smaller wire around our legs. This will give the popsicle sticks something to attach to. This is optional, but I use weights on the back legs to improve balance and sometimes art dolls turn out top heavy. These are just old chunky cupcake charms that I had laying around. Have the legs. I didn't wrap the small wire around the joints. 
Now let's cut out our sticks to the right size. To attach the sticks, I use a generous helping of hot glue on both sides. This stick is too thick for the last bone, so I just split it in half. We have our limbs, but we still need feet. I'll be curing them directly onto the wire with casting resin. I use Fabricast 50, but any casting resin should work. It cures in 10 minutes, making this a breeze. I don't recommend using epoxy unless you can keep the wire held up on its own overnight. Make sure to use proper safety equipment, including a respirator. Yeah, those aren't coming off ever. I also added fur to the feet, leaving some excess at the top to sew to the legs later. I made the pattern for the feet using a duct tape shell. We've got all of the legs done and wrapped onto our ball and sockets. I've added some duct tape for extra reinforcement. I've also added a sternum wire to keep the shape of the rib cage. Now we use strips of quilt batting around the armature to build up our stuffing. I use a little bit of hot glue here and there to keep it in place. Just don't get it on the plastic. Now on to sewing. Let's cut out our pattern. I made this pattern previously, but you can make one easily with saran wrap and duct tape over your stuffed form. And just cut out your pieces. I tend to sew my pelts by hand because I hate having to pull out fur from the seams, but you could use a sewing machine for this process. I'm using a blanket stitch on the inside. It's pretty sturdy and fast to make. I use a metal clay tool to quickly push fur down away from the seams, and I use plenty of clips to minimize cinching. Alright, here's our main body pelt. And let's not forget our tail. With that in, let's brush any trapped fur out of the seams. 
And here's our finished fur pelt. Time to throw it on the body. And down the legs. Once I get to the bottom, I sew the end of the legs to the top of the fur foot as well. Our body is completely done. The tangerine fur is a little too long, but we'll deal with that later. For now, let's move on to our ears. I use Eva foam with a hot glued wire frame and just sandwich that between pieces of fur. This method is great for creatures with huge ears since these weigh almost nothing. For the ear inside, I separate out ear guard hair and trim off the rest. This is a super easy way to get realistic ears. I've sewn around the ear edges and bent it into the shape I want. I've drilled holes into the head where I want the ear wires to attach into. Now we use a copious amount of hot glue on the bottom of the ears and stab them into our head, adding more glue on the edges for reinforcement. I use a needle to help smooth it out before it dries. Now we have a terrifying chihuahua gremlin thing. <laughs> Let's add the rest of the fur. Using a sharpie, I draw around the face where I want the transition to short face fur to be. We'll create a duct tape shell for our head pattern. I use small cuts of duct tape outside the sharpie line, making sure to cover up any gaps in the tape. With that done, I've drawn on my desired fur direction on each side. Our goal is to cut it out in as few pieces as possible keeping symmetry in mind. I've added multiple escape paths just in case, but I think I can make this in three pieces, separating off the back. Now we just lay these pieces on paper as flat as we can, spreading it out from the center. Faux fur backing has some give, so you don't have to be super anal here but if you can't lay the piece flat, cut it at your extra escape paths. And remember to flip the pattern piece and trace it onto the fur from the other side. I've drawn a note to remind myself of this. It's gluing time, and I'm using Fabri-Tac for this. Align the pieces with the sharpie line as a guide. I use a silicone tip tool to scoot glue into the edges. Make sure everything is glued down correctly at the edges. Using tools will help keep your fingers free of glue residue. To hide messy seams between different fur pieces, I drag out a small bead of Fabri-Tac along the edge, then pinch fur and push it down onto it. This creates a smooth transition without having to sew. Now that we've got the head covered as much as possible, it's time to transition over to flocking. We're going to glue fur down manually in one to two centimeter thick strips without the fur backing. This is an extremely time consuming process, but it's definitely worth it. Make sure the bottom of the fur line is touching the spread glue and squish and push the line back as much as possible, giving it several good pats at the contact line. After a few minutes, I very gently use a spare toothbrush to remove excess fur and move in a circular fashion. Let's speed this up.
are officially in terrier mode. I'll be using my pet shaver on a low setting to get rid of most of this bulk. Then, I transition into scissors for the rest of this hairdresser session. Take your time with this and look at reference photos of animals for guidance. You don't want to ruin all the flocking work you've done, so take plenty of breaks too. Let's give this Flareon's face some paint. This is really where the head comes to life. I'm using dark brown acrylics here and later I'll be sealing them with gloss sealant. If you get paint on the glass eye, don't panic, because you can remove it at the end. Can't forget that hairdo, I'm attaching it with hot glue right on the head. And our head is done and ready to be attached to the body. But before that, let's shave down this fluff a bit. I'm mainly concentrating on the legs and underside of the body with a smooth transition to the long hair at the top of Flareon's back. Having a handheld vacuum near your desk is super useful for this process. Last but not least, the neck ruff. I trim down the fur on the piece that faces flush against the inside of the neck. There we go, nice and fluffy. Let's close this piece and add some stuffing into it. And with this, we have all our pieces done. Let's see the final result. Thanks so much for watching! Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Which Flareon did you prefer? Don't forget to subscribe! See you next time!